Hey guys, this is Eli Sims from TwitchCheckIt.com here with the first After Effects Fridays we've ever done. Yeah, except this will probably go up on Saturday due to the fact that I had to work all day and um, me and Brandon have a life and as much as we would love to do it, we would love to make videos for you guys all the time. We can't make it our job just yet because um, we need money. So yeah, check it out guys. Um, today we're going to be going over basic motion tracking, which is awesome. I love motion tracking. You're going to love motion tracking. It is awesome. And uh, yeah, let's render this out real quick and pay attention to this corner right over here as this thing pops up boom beautiful it's tracked onto the sidewalk and it looks just awesome Brandon's walking and I mean his name's back there and he doesn't even know it and I gotta give a shout out to Brandon because he did this five minutes before he had a date hey so. what's up everyone this is Brandon Bias from ChichaCheckIt.com here with your After Effects footage <laughs> So, I mean, we literally just knocked this thing out of the way in, like, maybe two minutes. We got two of them, but the other one was too close, and it was too depth of filled. Which brings me to my next point, guys. Set yourself up to win, okay? I personally would like to have a better point to... Here, check it out. To explain what I'm doing. Basically, you pick a point, and you track that across the footage, and then you can put something back there or you know animate something like it's in the video and like it was there you know and as much as I would have liked to track something like this Brandon walks past it and the better thing of, to have done would have been put a rock like right here that's more shiny or you know sticks out so you can track it better I actually had to go with this black part back here this little black square that's under the telephone pole because I couldn't find a very good point now if you guys do I'm sorry I, I was not looking at it close enough but I mean I really did look at this thing pretty hard so yeah um so yeah let's uh, get started on this thing file new project and um do we want to save this uh, no we don't want to save Tigo biddies <laughs> So go over to the left, and you'll see this blank canvas area again. Double click that, bring up your browser, find the footage you would like to motion track, boom. And this doesn't matter, so okay. And uh, create a new composition, boom. And uh, yeah, here we go. The first thing you're going to want to do when you put your footage in here is right click in this blank canvas area, go new null object now there's two ways to do that you can either do that you can do layer where is it new null object or of course you can go control alt shift y but I mean that's a pretty confusing shortcut so I mean it's a lot easier just to right click down here and go new null object then go control shift alt something I don't even remember it so we'll delete that null object Alright, now that you have your null object, select the footage. Remember guys, that's really important. Select the footage you're going to motion track. Go over to the tracker tab. You might have something else selected. Select the tracker pad, then hit track motion. Alright, so you're going to find two boxes that pop up. You're going to be like, Eli, what is this? What have you gotten me into? I don't want this crap. But trust me, random person, you are going to want this crap because it's going to look awesome. So find the point that you found stays in the the shot the entire time and is pretty high contrast. And by high contrast, that means that it sticks out where After Effects can find it easily. Okay, so boom, you have your footage selected and the second box is kind of like the secondary tracker it just makes it more accurate the bigger you make these two things the better the track is gonna come out however it's gonna take a lot longer to do and you just don't want that so I keep it as small as I can with still getting you know enough 
information to it. So with this thing selected, you're going to hit track over. And you're just going to keep doing that over and over again. So if you don't do it this way, um, bad things can happen. And I can show you why right now. Basically, if you don't go frame by frame, this is what's going to happen. You're gonna, it's going to start out good. You're like, this is awesome. I don't have to do, uh-oh, what's going on? Oh, no. And it's going to screw up your entire point. And it's all because the video was pushing the motion track over past what was available for the track point to see, I guess would be the only thing to say. So what you're going to want to do is and within the footage right here on this side, you're not going to want to do it analyzing backwards because then it'll start tracking a, a different point. You're going to go backwards. Why isn't it doing it? What am I doing wrong? I'm so stupid. Oh my goodness, I'm retarded. Oh my gosh. What is going on? Oh, did I really just screw this up? I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm crazy. Oh, now it's doing it. Why wasn't it doing it before? That silly little thing. It got me. All right, so this is basically where the footage is going to smack that point to the side, and then it's just going to lose its uh, marbles, and it's just going to screw up and be bad. So we're going to analyze to the side because it's still OK. And we're going to move it a little bit. I kind of want these points to go out a little bit more. OK, analyze out, analyze, boom, screws up. What did I just do? Z. Control Z is undo. Gotta love that. So I'll put this back. Why won't it go over, mother freaker? I'll actually select the point and bring it over. Okay. Analyze more forward. Why isn't that working? Ah, it's right there. I'm so stupid. I don't even know why I'm doing tutorials. Like, I suck at tutorials. Okay, boom, new track. Keep going. Oh, it's back in focus. Look at that, guys. We're in business. Keeps going. It's looking good. Oh my goodness, this is going to be sexy. I can't believe this. Oh, go, baby, go. You're so good at this. You're so good. It sounds wrong. I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay, that just got confused. Uh, we're going to go backwards a little bit. Okay, looks good. And you're basically just going to do this the entire time. I know it's boring but it's worth it in the end. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this. Alright guys, welcome back. Um, okay, so I got a basic track. So now, let's go edit target, <laughs> edit target, and then select the null object that you created earlier. Hit OK. And now, this is pretty awesome guys. Just scroll back, check this out. You hit apply, X and Y, OK. Now all of that data that you just took was applied to that null object right up here. So uh, if you don't understand what I'm saying, check that out. I'm going to render this out real quick, you know, and you'll see why isn't the null object there. What the heck? Hey. Hey, what's up everyone? Oh, I guess it's not going to show it. But basically that null object is indeed stuck to the point which is awesome doesn't look too good right there 
It's the only point. But, you know, this is just a demonstration. You guys can go back and fix it if you want. It's really not that hard. So, we're going to right click, new, and uh, let's go uh, text layer. And we'll put, uh, what should we put? How about Brandon again? Okay, boom, beautiful. I'm going to select this tool, put it right about where I want it. Now, you're going to go to this little like swirly thing. This thing is called the parent button or the parent lasso. You can select it and then parent it to the null one layer. And what that does is whatever this layer does, just like a good son would, the Brandon layer will follow whatever the parent does. So, just so you can see what I mean. <gasps> Look at that, guys. Beautiful. It is indeed tracked on to the layer. So I bet now you think you're done. You're like, okay, I get it, Eli. This was a stupid tutorial. You're not done just yet, okay? We want to make this as convincing as possible, and I'm going to teach you some little cool things you can do with this. Wow, what the heck was that? I just want to make it a little bigger. Okay. So now it's on there. It's pretty huge. Now, guys, little tips for um, motion tracking. You want to put whatever your motion tracking on the same plane as what you motion tracked in the footage see if I put this Brandon layer up here look how bad it looks it just it just doesn't stay with the footage and you see a lot of uh, amateur After Effects users do that and then it's just ugly and doesn't look right so you're gonna want to that that's what they're doing wrong guys I just told you the golden rule with motion tracking keep the stuff on the same plane as what you're freaking freak freaking okay we'll put it right there looking mother freaking okay not the best definitely hey, not the up, best everyone? track this is Brandon Bias from ttjacket.com here with your After Effects but, footage you know the last part of that does look really good so there's another tip guys don't put if you want to make it as convincing as possible don't make it appear until it's absolutely necessary for it to appear because all that bad data I got at first you know where it pushed it out I can skip over that and then it's just a really good track from there on and it was really easy to do really fast and it looks really impressive so just um, keep that in mind now I'm gonna teach you guys some basic uh, you know keyframing and stuff so now that you have the track applied and it looks pretty good I wanna make this thing fade in so it doesn't look like it just goes you know pops in you know, this is kind of hey, harsh. Hey, what's up, everyone? Boom. This is Brandon Bias. I also want to make this appear right when he says Brandon Bias, so we'll move that oh. right there. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Ch -ch Check It Out. Okay, a little bit sooner, and then I'll make it fade in. All right, so the shortcut for opacity is with the layer that you want to opacize, that's fade in. You're going to hit T, and boom, you have the opacity. Then you're going to go to the beginning of the layer right here. And you're going to hit this little stopwatch. And what that does is create a keyframe. Keyframes are awesome. And um, without them, I don't know how you'd really do any really crazy effects. And we'll get into a lot with keyframing. I'll just do a specific episode or <laughs> Minecraft poop. No, I'll do a specific tutorial on keyframing because there's so much to it. So once you create that keyframe, make sure you have the opacity layer selected. And like uh, put that all the way down to zero then go forward a little bit and I could tell when he says bias on his mouth he's like Brandon bias so I'll make it fade in a little bit right when he's uh, saying Brandon bias so might want to make this a little longer and you can always just drag the keyframes it's awesome and boom you have it now fade in now let's watch it 
Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage. Very sexy. Very nice. Clean. Awesome. I love it. So now that we have that done, now let's go a little bit into, you know, maybe changing the color to match the background or something, you know, let's let's make it the same color as the sidewalk. That might look pretty good, you know, like it's part of the sidewalk or something. Let's see. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage. <laughs> I, I just realized I did that pretty fast. Basically what you want to do when you do that is have the layer that you want to change the color selected. Go up to the Characters tab, hit this little color swab thing, and then what I did was I hit the eye drop, and then I can select whatever color I want it to be. And in my case, I selected pretty close to the sidewalk, so it looks like it's just kind of part of the sidewalk. Okay, so that's in there now. And um, what I did in the previous thing was I changed the actual blending mode of the of the layer, so it kind of like was see-through, but you could still see it really well. And how I did that was I went over to the mode clicked on the mode drop down menu and then I put overlay because that one looks the coolest in my opinion but you know let's make it a uh, white or black I made it white but I mean you can make it whatever color your heart desires so we'll hit white and we'll hit zero again to render it and see how it looks hey what's up everyone this is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage and for not bad Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage. Alright, looks pretty good guys. So, now that you know the basics of motion tracking, you can really put anything you want as long as you parent it to the null object. So, let's turn that off. Let's duplicate this layer right here. And that's all. All I did, if you remember from the previous lesson, was Control D. And then we'll put this above the layer and we'll parent it to the null. And then we'll hit S with the layer selected. We'll scale it down. Then we'll move it over here to the same plane. Boom. Now it's part of the sidewalk. It is one with the sidewalk. And now, let's render it with zero. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage. <laughs> That's not bad. And uh, we'll just do a quick, quick opacity change real quick. So T. Remember guys? Stopwatch. Gotta drag it over to the beginning of the footage. Opacity. Zero. Drag it over. 100%. Zero. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitiJacket.com here with your After Effects footage. Alright. Not bad. And, you know, we don't need him to walk that long. You know, he's kind of... And it gets in the way. And normally, if I wanted it to go that long, I'd put a mask there. And once again, I'll just get into more of that... There's just so much to After Effects, and I don't want to just explain everything in one thing, because, I mean, it's, oh gosh, this would be an hour-long episode, and you guys, I, I suck at making tutorials right now, I, I realize that, and I'm sorry for that, but I will get better, and you guys will see me grow, and we will grow as a family. <laughs> that is my promise to you. <laughs> I'm crying a little bit. <laughs> it's all good, though. <clears throat> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this little taste of motion tracking and opacity and scaling and creating text layers and null objects and voodoo magic and all that stuff. So, hope to see you guys next Effects Friday and look forward to more Minecraft poop if you guys like that or not. I mean, it's really easy for us to make that and we really enjoy it and it seems like you guys are liking it too. So, see you guys next Friday. Peace out.